Hey everybody, welcome to Exploration. Welcome to Exploration. This is Ian, Damien, Rob. It's Damien, Ian, and Rob. It's Rob, Damien, and Ian here with you today. We are at the foot of the Dempster Highway. The Dempster Highway. Dempster Highway, the foot of the highway that goes to the Arctic Ocean. I have ridden about 7,000 kilometers. 3,800 kilometers. 7,000 kilometers. Another 700-ish kilometers more to go. We have 700 kilometers to go. We have 700 kilometers to go to get to the Arctic Ocean. The Arctic Ocean. Follow us for this journey to the Arctic Ocean on the Arctic Ride. On the Arctic Ride. Join us on the Arctic Ride. Beautiful. Nice. Nailed it. Everybody's waiting for the weekend. Everybody's playing the game. A couple years ago, Damien, Ian, and I decided we wanted to do this big cross-country trip across Canada, which would ultimately have us end up at the Arctic Ocean via the Dempster Highway and the Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk Highway. We wanted to do this because the Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk Highway just opened in 2017, and it's Canada's first and only road access to the Arctic Ocean, and it seems like it would be a great motorcycle adventure. Uh, it's about a 15,000 kilometer round trip for Ian and I, and about 7,000 or so for Damien because he's already in British Columbia. Uh, and we're a little tight for time, so we're going to try to do it all in about five to six weeks. On the trip, there's going to be the three of us, as well as my wife and two kids who will be joining us in a support vehicle. I am riding my KLR650, which is basically made for this type of trip. Ian, on the other hand, is riding his Suzuki Bandit, and Damien is taking his BMW R9T. So those bikes are going to add like an extra level of adventure to this adventure. Uh, we've just got over a year now to get everything planned out. Uh, so we have to figure out our route, our equipment, our lodging, uh, our timing, and we have to get the bikes and the vehicles tuned up and ready to go. Uh, so there's a lot to do. There's a heck of a lot of planning that goes into a trip like this. And I know a year seems like a long time to do it, but it's probably not. Yeah, as Rob's been saying, I guess, uh, and Ian and Earl talking about, we're, we're doing this trip, right? So let's specifically talk about the craziest part, right? We got the Dempster Highway, which is what I'm just looking at right now. We got the Dempster Highway, uh, which is... Basically, in the Yukon, there's this road, the Dempster Highway. The Dempster Highway is a dirt road that's about seven to 800 kilometers long. The, the goal there is, obviously, it, it's this dirt road that leads us to Inuvik, which is in uh, the Northwest Territories. Uh, this dirt road passes a lot of really cool stuff, apparently, along the way, where it's, uh, I mean, it's all dirt, but, but we're going through, like, a tundra. We're going through all these different national parks, campgrounds, and it's uh, completely isolated. So there's only one or two real spots to stop that look like any kind of civilization. There's the this like Great Plains area. Right, Eagle Plains is what it's called. Everyone says like that's your that's your gas stop, that's your food stop, that's everything. Um, so that'll be kind of like the critical thing. And it's about halfway into it. That means no support, nothing for for at least an, an entire day, depending on how wild this road is. It could be two days. I don't know. Uh, it could be three. It could be like, man, if we get any kind of trouble, it could be like a week. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we got that there, which is cool. Um, and then we get to Inuvik which is uh, a little town in the actual Northwest Territories. Uh, and that should be our next major stop, uh, I think, uh, before we get to Tuck. Hopefully, if, if we make it there, 
without issues. We can like fully supply and stuff like that. Like, I don't even know. We're gonna have to pack so much stuff for this. And then right after Inovic is where it gets, uh, the Dempster finishes, basically. Uh, and then we go to this Inovic to Tuktoyuktuk Highway, which is cool, but it's new, right? So not really a lot of reports on it. It used to be an ice road for a long time, but now it's a year round road. So, I mean, take that as you will, right? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> does that mean it's good? Or does that mean it's even worse? Or does that mean, like, I don't know. Or is it because it's newer, it's better? I don't know, man. And up to now, I've been kind of thinking, oh yeah, let's take the BMW. Let's go, let's go. I mean, the BMW is a cross Canada touring bike for sure. It can easily do that side of it, but I'm starting to have my doubts about it doing the Dempster part. I think you can do it, don't get me wrong. I think you can do it, but it is without question not designed to do it. <laughs> and it's really pretty, it's really pretty. So I have to decide uh, if I'm gonna, I guess, ugly it up. Uh, or if I'm gonna get something else. Yeah, we gotta figure it out. We gotta figure it out. But anyway, that's for me to figure out. The important thing is, uh, yeah, this Dempster Highway and this Inovic Highway are gonna be pretty wild, like totaling 900 kilometers and like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so it sounds like Damien may have bought a new motorcycle or a new used motorcycle anyways. It sounds like he got a KLR. Uh, he said he's gonna send me the the posting he got it from, but yeah, I think he's getting a new KLR for the trip, which is, it's cool, but it's also really funny because he was convincing Ian that taking the Suzuki Bandit's gonna be fine. And he's like, no, don't worry, man, it'll be great. I'm bringing my BMW, it'll be fine. And now he's gone and swapped it out for a KLR. So yeah, I wanna check out those ads and see what it looks like. That's That's pretty funny though. I don't think it wouldn't do it. I just, it would get dirty and dinged and, and all that stuff. Like that's the problem I have is like, it's a garage baby. It a hundred percent like anodized aluminum all over it. You can't polish anodized aluminum. <laughs> if it gets dinged, it's dinged <laughs> forever. All right, guys, coming to you live from my garage with my wonderful adventure bike, right? No, couldn't do it could not do it. So let me introduce you to the actual adventure bike. Ta-da! <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Okay, let me tell you what I've done. So I found this guy online, doesn't run. It's a KLR 650, just like Rob's. So that's good. But now I gotta get to work. Um, I can't work on it here. This is a Strata and all that stuff. So I cannot work on it. So thankfully, my buddy Chris is gonna help me work on it. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. It could be something simple. It could be something incredibly complicated. Uh, I had to like basically trailer it here to get it to work. Uh, and I'm probably gonna have to trailer it to Chris's. And then I'm probably going to have to spend a long time figuring out how to fix it. So we've had to make a tough decision. And that decision is, we don't think our Subaru is gonna make this trip. It's already at 254,000 kilometers. It's gonna probably be another 10,000 or 20,000 even before we actually even leave for this trip. So we're on our way to look at a new one. And by new, I mean a slightly used one, but much newer than this. Necessary, but not great, I guess. It's gonna be expensive. Yeah, there we go. So Ian and I are just out for a November ride before I put the bikes away for the winter. Kind of get an idea of anything we might need to purchase over the winter for our trip. You know, maximum comfort. <laughs> <laughs> maximum comfort and functionality. What do you think, man? Yeah. Um, it's going to be a lot for, <laughs> for myself, at least, to get the bikes done. <laughs> for my bike to be done. Um, tires being a main thing. Oh yeah, my tires are um, done. 
Yeah, I need, I need new tires for sure. Would like a skid plate, um, just in case anything goes and punctures my your lovely oil exhaust. It's yeah. actually well hidden behind the the exhaust, though. That's the thing, which is kind of cool. The, the next thing next to the the tires are going to be the luggage racks. I can still get away with having uh, my soft bags that I used for my last trip. Um, but I think going out to the Dempster Highway is going to be a different thing where it will require a bit more robust uh, luggage and pannier so that it doesn't puncture anything in the, in the soft packs. Um, but yeah, general maintenance, just like tightening up all the bolts and everything to as per spec, that would be key. Yeah, I'll get your fancy dancy glove warmers too. Oh yeah, man, that's good. life and luxury. Yeah, my hands have been very toasty <laughs> on this ride. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm bringing all like oil filter, oil, yeah. air filter, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Chris, working together on fun, exciting projects. What did I do? Nothing. You you did great. Uh, what we did is we took it apart for the most part. It's in pieces. I want to say it's a part. It's well, like... it's in a couple pieces. There you go. It's in a couple pieces. <laughs> we took out the carb. We took off the gas tank. The garb. The carb seems nice, although there's potentially. Uh... The carb is garb. Yeah. The carb is fine. No, the carb is fine. It's no. not garb. It's totally good. Um, but so, the idea is we noticed some green liquid in the carb. Yeah. Which could be coolant. Most likely. Feels like coolant, which is bad. Oh, that's uh, super bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not where it's supposed to be. Um, and then we just ran a compression test and it's at 30, which is low. Uh, typically you would well, want at least a hundred. There's a nice little, little red little, line thingy. Little red line Who's it? Yeah. So we want at least a hundred, I would say. Uh, and we are not getting that. So that means a bunch of different things. Either the valves are fucked or the piston rings are fucked. One in here, right? In this section. So sit rep. Chris did the awesome thing of dropping a screw in the engine, which is apparently a, an unfriendable action, but I still love him. So now we're just taking apart the side cases, inside. looking inside. So, so, so far we've discovered that magically this vehicle needs an oil change. No one would have thought that would. And we're going into the belly of the beast to try and find this screw. So we'll see how that goes. So here we are, getting this bad boy ready for a trip up to the Arctic. And yeah, there's a little bit of work to be done. So, um, yeah, this trip with Rob and Damien, I'm quite excited for it. Uh, we'll be meeting up with Damien later, actually, in Jasper. To, the plan is to meet up with Rob from Toronto. We head out. Uh, we cut across the prairies. Uh, it'll take about three days to get out of Ontario, which is maybe three, four days. Not too sure just yet. I remember the last time I did it, it was quite... Uh, lengthy it took three days so we'll see if we could do better anyway so yeah cutting across the prairies it'll be my second time cutting across the prairies via the motorcycle uh straight flat there are some turns once in a while but it's normally straight and flat i, I forget exactly the, the kind of road map now but cutting into jasper being the main thing that will be beautiful can't wait to see kind of the horizon of like you see the little mountain tips of uh, uh, over the horizon and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger Jasper and then uh, cutting across west until we can't really cut across west anymore and then head straight north I think it's called the Cassier Highway that we'll be going through getting to Whitehorse meeting up with my partner there and then all together we'll be the ultimate strong force heading up into the Arctic Circle to um, Tuk Tayak Tuk. I'll have to work on that pronunciation a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's going to be kind of the roadmap of the trip. Um, Tuk Tayak Tuk, spend a couple of nights, turn back uh, through a different route that we take. So we have a little bit of change of scenery. But voila, that's kind of the roadmap. 
of the trip. I'm looking forward to it. All right, so I think we have our route. I don't want to say finalized because like these things are never totally finalized. I'm sure this is going to change again. But for now, we kind of have our route hammered out as best we can. And it's going to be very similar to this, the final route. So uh, what we got, it's a total of 41 days and 14,569 kilometers of driving. So here's a um, sort of a rough idea of our trip out. Uh, the times from Google here are not correct, but yeah, leave Toronto, North Shore of Superior. We head a little bit north once we get into Manitoba to stay off the Trans-Canada, hopefully a little more interesting roads. We hit um, Riding Mountain National Park. From there, we head west through Edmonton and into Jasper Park, where we meet Damien. From Jasper, we head west into British Columbia. Instead of taking the Alaska Highway, we're taking the Interior Highway, uh, the Yellowhead Highway, north up into the Yukon and then from the Yukon we head up to Whitehorse and then we hit the head of the Dempster Highway from Dempster Highway north through the Yukon into Northwest Territories and eventually Tuk Tuk. Uh, the way south is sort of similar but slightly different. <laughs> so heading south we leave Tuk Tuk back down to Dawson City. We're gonna spend a day in Dawson City uh, from Dawson City, we head south, and this time we are taking the Alaska Highway through the Yukon, through British Columbia, and down into Alberta. Uh, we say goodbye to Damien, very close to Jasper, where we met up, which is sort of ironic. Damien heads west from there, back to Vancouver. We're heading east. Um, we're going to try to avoid Edmonton as best we can. Maybe check out Drumheller and some of the dinosaurs in that area. We're going to take the Trans-Canada. We might not stay on Trans-Canada, but right now we have the Trans-Canada listed as the route across through Saskatchewan and then down through Winnipeg. Um, and eventually back into Ontario. And yeah, that's basically the route. As I said, 41 days, a little less than 15,000 kilometers. Should be good. Should be good. Okay, Chris. Yeah? Hey, man. You got it. You keep running from the camera. Here you are. I'm camera shy. Oh no! Uh, yeah, so we've got the top mostly put together. We just gotta start attaching the top valve cover, I guess, really, right? Yeah, just gotta put the cover back on. And then we've done the side case uh, and put that all together. So all the gears and all the chains and everything's mostly tensioned correctly. We'll see. Everything's torqued, which is nice with the correct torque poundage so that's fun poundage foot poundage <laughs> sir isaac newton's meters yeah mr newton meters himself. <laughs> yeah so so yeah we'll put on the top and hopefully start it or at least attempt 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 we're gonna attempt to start it i want this thing to shoot gray smoke right at my car that'd be mm. epic this absolutely gloriously perfectly clean beauty yeah so I just wanted to run through a few things that I was looking to fix up on my bike before I head out. Um, this is a 2003 Suzuki Bandit. It's pretty much uh, indestructible in certain respects, especially about the engine. Going to talk about how the Sport Touring and what I'm hoping to do to change it to an Adventure Touring motorcycle. I know Rob has a KLR uh, 650. Damien just recently got a KLR as well. Uh, if he can get it running, that is. Um, so it is now up to me with this bike to see how I can change it to make it work. And I've heard conflicting stories about how the Dempster Highway is going to actually treat a motorcycle, a lot of which is going to be terrible. And I believe that part of my concern is going to be is actually the handling of it on the Dempster Highway because this is going to be a, uh, a gravel road. Um, and so that's the first thing I'm going to be looking into are these tires. Um, and so all I really need are some tires with really good push at the back and so some really deep knotted treads and then at the front something that just tracks well. That's the tires. So the next thing I really want to get on this motorcycle before I go is a skid plate. 
you'll notice that this is all just completely open and I'm really concerned about like things bashing um, uh, onto the onto the exhaust pipes and all the way through that's one thing I'm hoping to try and figure out is like maybe some aluminum sheet metal and just stick it on at the bottom it's gonna be look it'll look very jerry-rigged but hey um, there are no uh, skid plates for this for this little baby here what else am I going to be bringing on this trip? Same thing as last time, I'm going to be having tire uh, repair kit. So I've got the slime, I've got the plug holes, I've, I'm, I'm bringing my automatic pump. Um, so that, that should help with the tires. A few things this time around I'm thinking of bringing is actually some consumables like the engine oil and engine oil filter. The other consumable, um, which I learned from my last trip, uh, it's not really a consumable, uh, but it is going to be a chain and sprocket set. Um, and part of that, again, is after the dumpster with it, everything caked in its dirt and glory, um, I'm expecting the, the chain and the sprocket to also be really torn up. Those are the major pieces I'm hoping to put together on this motorcycle uh, before this motorcycle Arctic trip. Ah, retake that part. What the hell am I going to say to wrap this up? So the bike is going in for maintenance on Wednesday. There's a couple of things I got to do before then though. First off, the turn signals are all screwed up. I don't know what happened over winter storage, but they seem to have fallen apart. So I got to get those put back together. Get them a little better supported. Yeah. <laughs> Step one of many. Makes me wonder how. Damien's doing with all of his bike tear down and rebuild. Hope that's going well. Okay, so it doesn't start still. <laughs> <laughs> it almost starts. It like it goes. It does some rat raps with a quick yeah. start. It, with the quick start, which means it's a fuel problem now. And if it's a fuel problem, then we potentially have to either have old gas in it replaced, or look at the carburetor or potentially the fuel filter could be bad. So we're gonna take it easy tonight, not do it, come back to it, play with all those three things and see what's up. Yeah. No, but I think we did, I, th I think this is a success. Yeah, it's definitely better than before. Yeah, So it we, actually does a we thing. We improved it. We improved it. Chris, that right there is an idling motorcycle. We did it! We did it! So, I got the bike in for maintenance. Uh, I needed tires, I needed a chain, and then just like a seasonal maintenance, make sure everything was on the up and up. And they got all that stuff installed, and then I got a call this afternoon saying there is a crack in my crankcase, and the bike is not holding oil. So essentially the bike is toast, which is super awesome. And, uh, yeah, we just bought a new car, which we're literally picking up in two days, and I don't have money for a new bike, so I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, so we got this beautiful beast with its new kicks. And so we're going to, now that we've completed all the maintenance required for the Bandit, we're going to see if it starts. Yeah. So yeah. all that hard work on the wheels and the tires. On the wheels and the tires. We have to make sure. Yeah. You know, we have to make sure it starts. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So give it a whirl. Hopefully it starts. <laughs> Come on, gas, get in there. Oh, you hear it? Thinking about it. Mm. Thinking about it. They're all on bullet. Give it the L's. Oh, oh. oh, she's trying. Yeah. It works. The thing that worked before still works. So, you can see where the oil is leaking out of the crack in the crankcase, but 
I did figure out how to solve that problem, and I solved it with this. <laughs> a, a slight upgrade. It is a, a 2012 KLR650 versus my old 2008. Um, this new one's only got just over, or almost 4,000 kilometers on it, though. So it's basically new, other than the fact that it's like 11 years old. But yeah, so this bike will not be coming with us. This one will. That's unfortunate, because I didn't really want to have to get a new bike. So there's a few things now I have to do to get the new bike ready. Um, specifically, I need to take off all my aftermarket parts off of my current bike, put them onto the new one. So the parts I gotta pull off, obviously, <laughs> phone holder and camera holder, that's super easy. Uh, I also have my crash bars, I have my aluminum skid pan that's gotta come off. I also have the thermobob, which you can't see because the fairings are on, but thermobob um, cooling modification, coolant modification, lets the bike run with a little more stable temperature. That's gotta be taken off. And my electrical L has got to be taken off. So I have to strip the tanks, the fairings off of both bikes and get that stuff installed on this guy. And then we'll be ready to go. So there we go. I ran out of daylight yesterday but i did manage to get all the fairings back on crash bars are on skid plates on new cooling systems in still gotta bring my phone mount and camera mount over but that's that's easy enough to do but yeah looking pretty good almost ready to go all right guys so it's been a long time really i'm running out of time it's uh june 14th right now obviously lots of effort has been put into the KLR 650, the lovely dream boat bike that you see here. Uh, and I'm about to take it on its maiden voyage, but lots of ha has happened to it. Lots have been done to it. Uh, obviously we've reworked the suspension. We've reworked the engine by doing valve clearance adjustments and doing the doohickey and replacing the oil and all this stuff. Uh, there's still more work to be done. So we have to do the chain i'll show you it's uh it's pretty rough and it's missing a spoke you can't see it right now but one of them is missing so i gotta replace that that's gonna have to be done um i also have to replace the tires they're a little bit rough right now i have those tires and i have tire iron so good opportunity to test out if i can do that um but what i really wanted to share is how she sounds because she's a majestic beast so put you down for a second so i can use the oh do i even need the choke ah uh, no i don't need the choke we're gonna risk it ready harley davidson eat your heart out that's a that's a jazzy sound all right let's try and ride it so sit rep i don't know if you can hear me let me turn off this beautiful machine So, sit rep. I had to do the fan delete because fan was broken. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be overheating, which is nice. It's getting to a point of kind of overheating, but then stops overheating. So that's great. Uh, so at least in 17 degree summer weather in Vancouver, it's uh, not so bad. Um, the brakes are abysmal. Uh, so that's fun to discover. Uh, the front brake is just, you squeeze as hard as you can and maybe you survive. Um, and the Speedo doesn't work, which is something you definitely don't discover when you're just uh, working on a bike. So that's funny. It's probably something simple, like something to fix down here or something. We putzed around and, and took off the tire a bunch. So maybe I just missed something because I don't know how these old Speedos work, but we'll figure that out. Otherwise though, uh, apart from the exhaust leak that obviously makes it sound so good, uh, that's <laughs> in traffic pretty much killing me. Uh, I think pretty successful. I think we're gonna have a good trip. She feels, she feels tough. She feels good. So 
And here's the tire I'll be taking um, to the Arctic. This is how my packing is going. Relatively chaotic. It's uh, everything, everywhere. Not necessarily all at once. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff everywhere. I, I Last time I did the trip to Jasper, I could fit everything into that bag and into those two panniers. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on this time around. Oh well. Onwards and upwards. So this is the disaster that is our house at the moment. Uh, we kind of got things divided up into staging areas here. So this pile of gear is what's going to be going into the trailer and onto my bike. Uh, it's like jerry cans, a lot of tools, that sort of thing. Some things still need to be packed. Uh, this stuff here is part of what is going to be going into the car. Over yonder is one of my cats and my other cat. And then this is the equipment that's going to be going into the rooftop carrier. Uh, stuff we're not going to be accessing quite as often. And stuff that might be able to get a little bit wet because the rooftop carrier leaks a little. And then over in the kitchen, we got some of the stuff that's going into the car. Our cooking tote, our food, our cooler. And then not shown is our personal gear, which has not yet been packed, but that's going to be over here. All right, so we are leaving in... What's today? Tuesday? Four days. We're leaving in four days. Time is here. We're getting our... The downstairs of my house is absolutely destroyed right now with all our gear kind of laid out everywhere and getting everything sorted and organized and packed into boxes. Um, right now I'm up here looking at the map of the first chunk of our route. Um, I'm looking at it because... The summer of 2023, or the spring of 2023, which we're in right now, uh, Canada is on fire. There is forest fires all across the country, and there's a really, really huge one right now, right here in this part of Quebec. So it is absolutely destroying this part of Ontario with smoke, which is the first leg of our trip takes us from Hamilton, Toronto, right to here in Sudbury, so... There is a pretty bad smoke forecast for the Saturday that we're leaving. Uh, I got N95 masks packed just in case, but uh, it's going to be very interesting with the smoke and all the fires. Uh, right now, the Alaska Highway actually is closed because of fires over in BC, uh, up in this part here. Now, fortunately, the Alaska Highway is part of our return trip. We're actually taking an inland highway up so hopefully in the next four weeks five weeks this fire will get itself sorted out and uh that highway will reopen but if it doesn't we're gonna have to make a change of plans but we can't do anything about that we're just gonna have to play that by ear so um this is the eve of departure for our great arctic motorcycle trip um, this will be very interesting because I was a little bit complacent with the fact that I've done done this trip before to um, Jasper uh, from Toronto and that was pretty good in terms of my packing, the efficiency of it. And so I didn't really spend too much time kind of figuring that part out, but I'm actually having a lot of trouble trying to figure out what to pack into um what i have which is the same thing but it's not fitting all of a sudden so i don't know <laughs> i don't remember what i did last time and so it's a little bit stressful for me right now but i'll get there i'm excited stressed anxious all at the same time hey so this is the one pack i've got these guys ready to go Ready to be packed up tomorrow morning. Don't want to leave it outside overnight. I think I have everything, and if not, well, I can buy some stuff along the way, I guess. Okay, this is what's become of my bike. 
and it's where I'll be sitting uh, set up ready to go I'll be putting that Ooh. bag as my tent bag oh yeah tank bag rather this is a uh, much more loaded up than last time but well, departure time and we are on our way I won't see home for another month and a half I'm feeling all sorts of excitement I'm super tired <laughs> All right, bike is packed, car is packed, rooftop carrier is packed, it's in the car or in the trailer right now, and the trailer is packed. So we're ready. All right, we are on our way. Day number one, we are on our way. I, I, can't, I can't believe it. I'm so glad we have the trailer. <laughs> 30 minutes up, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, low pan up. <laughs> and I think Ian is putting another layer on because he's chilly. 